So, uh, well, welcome to this payment condition evaluation webinar. So, uh, today we speak about uh, uh, how we can evaluate the payment distress. Just my presentation first to start. I'm Umberto Pinori. Uh, I'm senior payment engineers at Dynatels. I have more than 15 years experience in payment survey and evaluation. I'm inside the company responsible for equipment and software application. Uh, r and so I support the R&D activities and I lead the consulting unit. You have here my contact, uh, so please uh, feel free to write me or contact uh, to request more information about this presentation or uh, your uh, comments. Some uh, uh, preliminary webinar info. Uh, the webinar will be recorded uh, to be shared public uh, on our uh, YouTube channel. Uh, the camera is always off for all attenders. The attenders can sign uh, as anonymous if they want, uh, so that you can hide your name. Uh, the attenders can switch on the subtitle themselves from option panel if you want to read our uh, speech. And for question, uh, please use the chat space. Uh, will be a question and answer section at the end of the presentation. Uh, and uh, I'm uh, enjoy to answer to your any question. A small outlook on what uh, we are going to discuss today. The first one is the needs to evaluate payment quality. So we want to uh, we will discuss uh, why we are going to rate the quality of the payment. Uh, the second pay, uh, the second point is the distress identification. So how we can categorize which in which format we we are going to take account about the cracks. The third one is the type of survey. So we'll see that there is different kind of uh, way and technology that we can use for payment investigation. Uh, which are the most common use uh, parameters for payment condition? So which is the uh, parameter that you can calculate and share with your clients uh, or with your authorities in order uh, to represent the real condition of the road. Uh, then it will be a presentation of our software, Dynatest Explorer software. Uh, so uh, I'll show you how we can manage the data in order to calculate this parameter. And the last part of this meeting, of course, is uh, dedicated to your question. To start, uh, so how we can evaluate the quality of a payment surface? So the first question is, uh, which is the payment condition? If we are looking about these two pictures, of course, the, less, the left one is maybe not good, and the second one is a good condition. But of course, it's not good, the left one, maybe for a human road, but for a very rural, rural road, maybe could be acceptable. So we judge not good and good based on our uh, perception or based our common usage and judgment of the road. But it's not an absolute reference, good and not good. But anyway, the left picture is associated to a general uh, idea of not good road. Uh, and again, when you identify a distress or the payment that is not good, which is the severity level we can associate to the surface damage? So here you see that uh, we have three pictures of three roads, all of them characterized by cracks or defects, if you want to start to talk uh, more general. And probably we can say that the left one, there is a higher number of cracks, so it's high damaged. The second one is medium uh, damaged, and the third one, there is only one isolated crack 
So we can say that is a low level of damage. But if we don't find a way to count this, how much is damaged, if we don't find a way to calculate in an objective way what is high, medium, and low damage, we cannot repeat our judgment. So in general, we can say that these are three types of uh, judgment, but it's not always true, of course. And another question is, uh, are always these stresses the same type? And this is very important because not all the distress are the same type. Here you can see four different kind of uh, distresses and all of them are crack related. So in any picture you can see crack. In the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, le in the left one you can see a longitudinal crack that is isolated because we have just one crack in the middle of the road. The second one is what we call alligator crack. So it's a cluster of cracks all together, and this is associated to different phenomena of the pavement. And then we have a puddle. So it's an area where there is a missing part of pavement layers associated to the alligator crack. And then you have a block crack. Uh, that is another kind of distress is associated to another phenomena of the pavement, the uh, degradation. So not all the same, not all the distresses are the same. So, uh, and each distress is, has a, a reason why it appears on the pavement. In this case, all four of these distresses are associated to cracks. But sometimes there are some distresses that are not related to crack. Of course, they, uh, they not appear on the pavement with crack. Now, in some cases, we have what we call bleeding or raveling or rotting. So at three, at this, are an example of three distresses where you don't have cracks on the pavement, but your pavement is damaged anyway. So the pavement evaluation and surface evaluation, of course, need to take into account different factors that contribute to reduce the quality of the surface. And uh, of course, bleeding is associated to mixture problem, probably. Raveling, there is missing stone on the surface of the pavement. And rotting is a permanent deformation in the loading area of the lane. That can be propagated also in cracks uh, or not. It depends on the asphalt concrete mix. For this reason, uh, it's important to know what we are going to rate as these stresses. And for rigid payment, we can have totally different type of distresses. And here again, some are crack related and not crack related. For example, here on the left, we have corner break. That is probably the most critical part of the concrete slab because of the support usually uh, is reduced compared to the center of the slab. So, uh, and uh, is a part where it's very easily find uh, a breaking. Uh, we have shuttle slab. It means that the, the slab is divided in big, in big pieces and is broken in three, four or five parts usually. We can have joint spalling, so a degradation of quality of joints. Each of them is a distress that has to be identified and characterized. And uh, of course, the information is transferred to a following step of the procedure. And again, uh, here we have other not crack related uh, distress on rigid pavement. We can have scaling when uh, the, uh, the top uh, the top part of the slab uh, is uh, uh, is removing from the uh, from the surface. We can have uh, a joint sealant damage that usually is missing part of the sealant, and we can have the pop out. Pop out typically is when uh, 
single stone or single aggregate is uh, uh, is missing on the top of the uh, of the concrete surface. So this type of distresses are not related to the crack. So this is a, uh, an example just to say that not always the pavement damage is associated to the cracks, but to a lot of uh, uh, type of distresses are not crack related. So first of all is how we can ensure that we are going to take into account always the same distresses in the same way. So by the time uh, different standards have been developed uh, in order to define which is the distresses that to be taken into account to evaluate the payment degradation and how we want to rate and in which way. So uh, here I reported a short list. The first two are ASTM standard that are the most common used. Uh, one is for airport and one is for road. Uh, then there is a PACER uh, manual that is used in US mostly. And then we have uh, also Ashto protocol uh, that is standard practice for quantifying cracks in asphalt payment surface from collected payment image, uh, utilize, utilizing uh, automated methods. So here we are introducing the concept that the cracks are quantified using technology and not just by manual rating. Uh, and then I uh, on the bottom uh, we uh, also report a couple of standards. One is uh, indicate uh, how we can collect the pictures to uh, rate the distresses. And the last one uh, is, a, is a new index that have been developed uh, just to evaluate the quality of the payment based on crack. So we are not going to rate all the list of the distresses of the previous standard, but just the crack. This uh, simplify a lot um, the calculation uh, for the uh, picture analysis because of course from the picture it's not easy always identify and classify not crack related distresses. So which can techniques are used for crack detection? And here I reported three picture. Uh, one is the um, uh, one is the manual rating. One is the uh, one is the uh, HD camera, and the third one is the uh, 3D laser camera. As you can see, uh, the manual rating it means that a person is on the road, walking on the road, and try to measure, maybe in this case you see that is a, uh, is a wheel meter, the length of the crack. So there is a process to identify what is the crack and then measure the length of the crack. And then of course the, the, the operator need also to associate an evaluation on the width of the crack. And again, in the area taken into account for the evaluation, the operator has to judge also the presence of the, the, the stresses that are not crack related. Uh, the second type is a HD camera. Uh, as you can see, of course, there is a, a benefit to use uh, the HD camera, but uh, uh, these are normal camera HD that are usually placed on the roof of the vehicle. So you can get picture, black and white picture of the payment, and then you need to post processing has manual rate, so the operator draw the cracks identified or any kind of distress is able to identify based on the picture uh, the operator is going to analyze. Uh, of course, the quality of the uh, of the of the picture is the critical point of the process. And the third uh, method. The right one is 3D laser camera uh, that today is mostly used for this kind of work. 
So we can recreate uh, the transversal profile of the road and using the algorithm is possible to identify the distress in a semi-automatic way. So the operator that uh, are looking the screen of the computer is only in charge to run uh, a review of the work, but not all the process has to be performed in a, a manual way. Just briefly, give you an idea about the distress list. So how, how many can be the distresses we are going to look for, collect, identify, and rate? Uh, in this case, we have uh, around 20 uh, type of distresses for asphalt payment that is come, go from a uh, single longitudinal crack, alligator crack, uh, bottle, Patching that, of course, patching and utility cracks related is one of the most critical point in uh, urban road, especially uh, we have raveling or weathering that can affect uh, some kind of uh, um, AC mix. So, uh, but of course, taking consideration any time uh, twenty possible. Uh, different type of distresses is a long process. And each type of distress has a different influence in the surface judgment. So not all the distresses we, we will see uh, later is associated to the same weight in the payment judgment. Uh, also for rigid payment, there is a, uh, a long list of uh, type of distresses you can have, so they are different because of course concrete is different from asphalt and the slab has type of uh, uh, break and damage that uh, cannot be uh, found in, cannot be found in the uh, um, uh, flexible payment. But uh, again, when we are looking at slab, there is a huge number of defects that has to be taken into account for identification. Uh, most of them sometimes cannot be easily identified by the uh, automatic rating. So the man in some cases, manual investigation could be better than not uh, um, uh, semi-automatic investigation, but just because uh, uh, some defects are quality and not and not accountable. So here we can see a distress map. So you can see this is a, a, an airport, uh, and you can see all the distresses have been uh, identified in an automatic way. So each distress is uh, is the uh, is drawn and then plot on in this case on Google Earth. But the, the real question is uh, when you rate it or when you take note manually about all the defects on the payment, this type of the information is really usable, can be directly used. So if you know that you have a 50 square meter of alligator cracks in a certain area of your payment, is a useful information or we need something uh, that can summarize this information collected on site. So if you know that um, if the results of your investigation on site is that uh, you have 10 meter of alligator crack, 20 square meter of, uh, sorry, uh, 10 meter longitudinal crack, 20 square meter of uh, alligator crack, and then uh, you have uh, bleeding and rotting for 10 meters, is something that you can manage directly, or is a you is a big quant is a big quantity of information that can has to be summarized in some way. So uh, the STM standard provide uh, um, a possible solution to this problem. Uh, this is a PCI rating scale. Uh, PCI is a numerical rating uh, of the payment condition that is uh, fixed in a range uh, between zero and 100, where 100, uh, it means that the surface is in perfect condition 
and zero, it means that the payment uh, in worse condition or quite destroyed. Uh, of course, the PCI provide a measure of the press, the current condition of the payment based on the distress observed on the surface which also, of course, is an indication on the structure, structural integrity and surface uh, operational condition. The PCI, of course, cannot measure the structural capacity or provide direct measurements of the skid resistance or roughness. The PCI provides uh, an objective and rational basis for determining maintenance and repair needs, of course, a continuous monitoring of the PCI is used to establish the rate of payment deterioration, which permit early identification of major rehabilitation needs. So this is important uh, why we need a standard that codified what are going to rate. Otherwise, the, invest the multi-year investigation cannot be comparable. But if we have standard that address in a proper way how to rate uh, what rate and how to elaborate this information, of course, these parameters can be comparable year by year. Uh, this is an example why not all the same, not all the distresses has the same impact in the PCI. So here you can see two graphs uh, of the deduct value that is a uh, is direct correlated to the PCI, is inverse correlated. Uh, about the, uh, in the magnitude of the damage of edge cracking and patching. If you see the patching uh, has an higher impact compared to the edge cracking. And we have this kind of, and of course, uh, inside each type of distress, there is different severity levels. Usually there are three severity levels, low, medium, and high. And the standard define uh, how, uh, how each crack severity has to be measured to uh, set some thresholds. So this is just to say that the alligator cracks has a more, uh, is a, has a higher magnitude compared maybe to the single longitudinal crack in, in order to evaluate the condition of the vein. And this is very important uh, for the final judgment uh, of the payment. Here is an example of uh, the information that the ASTM provides for each single distress. So for uh, we start with the description. In this case, I report uh, bumps and sucks. So like uh, there is a small definition and description bumps are small localized uh, upward displacement of the payment surface. They are different from shows in the shows that are caused by unstable payment. So, uh, of course, there is a, an address for the operator how to identify the uh, distress and not maybe uh, make a wrong uh, evaluation assuming the distress is not related to the other type of distress. Uh, after the description, there is the section of the severity level. Um, so here you can see severity level. There is low, medium and high bump can cause severity, uh, low severity, right quality, medium severity, right quality on high severity, right quality. So sometimes it's not easy. For cracks, you have the width of the crack and it's easy to associate one severity level to the crack because uh, if the crack's uh, width is less than six millimeter, is low severity between six and 13 millimeter, is medium and over 13 millimeter is high, for example. Uh, but here, in some case, of course, the uh, evaluation of the stress is, uh, is in a subject way and this, is the, the, uh, and this is the reason why sometimes the automatic detection cannot identify all the, uh, all the uh, distress, but all the operator needs to add a criteria. And it's important that uh, we have also an how to measure. So the standard report, how, uh, how, which is the way 
each single distress has to be rated and the information has to be reported. So after we define which standard we want to use uh, and the standard provide information uh, uh, how to rate each single distress, of course we need to go to the in, on the road or in payment or, or in the airport and rate. So uh, the old method, the oldest method, and sometimes is today used, is the manual inspection. Uh, manual inspection is uh, is good because of course uh, you can judge the payment, the engineers is trained to rate, and of course it can take in consideration all the 20 types uh, of distresses, for example, for the flexible payment. Of course, there are some issues associated to the manual survey. The first one is that the stress judgment, judgment of course, is subjective. Because uh, even if the standard is clear, but there is always a human judgment when you are on site. And this sometimes can change the final results of the inspection. The second point, of course, is time consuming because uh, it's a very slow uh, process. So starting from the sample unit identification, so where you have to run the test, that sometimes are uh, area 50 meter long and entire uh, length width. But uh, uh, so you need to spend a lot of time and when you have to count the length of a single crack, it means that you have to measure with the ruler or with the wheel meter the uh, single crack length. So it's a very slow process. Uh, of course, you need to uh, close the lane, otherwise uh, there is a safety issues that there are still, uh, even if the lane is closure because uh, you, the man is on the road close to the traffic, and of course, also the uh, lane closure is a is a safety issue for the drivers. So there are safety problems. Uh, usually, there is a low level of repeatability because if you try to repeat the same uh, survey, it's not easy that you always get the same result because uh, sometimes, of course, there is a problem of subjective uh, judgment of the distress. And sometimes there is a problem to repeat the same measurement of the distress. Uh, and the last issue is the sampling, of course, because uh, since you cannot rate 100% of the uh, of the length of the lane of the road, uh, you need to decide where run the test, uh, and also the sampling can be be a problem. Uh, sampling. This is an example of a map. For the uh, for an airport, uh, so you have to decide wh where to run the test. So there are uh, some rules to respect compared to the standard in order to be sure that your uh, investigation can be representative of your uh, uh, payment. This is another example, of course, uh, just to have a section definition in airport. It's more critical than not in road, so you need to define area where there is loaded area, unloaded area and shoulder, and then you have to decide which part you want to test. This is an example of the apron. There is a huge area that are not loaded, uh, loading related. So, uh, but if you want to run uh, in an automatic way, technology now uh, allow you uh, help you a lot, allow you to use a, a LCMS technology, for example. So this is what uh, we call the multifunctional vehicle. That is a vehicle where multiple technologies are integrated. Uh, starting from the right, we have the RSP survey. So it's a profilometers bar in front. The, you can measure transversal profile and longitudinal profile and macro texture. Uh, you have a you can have a raw camera for the uh, surrounding area picture. We can install up to eight cameras. Uh, it depends how many angles uh, and precise you want to have uh, in the surrounding area. Uh, GPS of antenna, of course, uh, uh, now is mandatory just to have a GPS 
uh, coordinates of each crack and any information collected. We have the DMI that, to count the distance and the LCMS camera is uh, installed on the uh, rear part of the vehicle. Uh, the LCMS can collect 2D image and 3D image, so is a, it can be used as a normal camera for collecting uh, black and white picture or 3D payment profile line scanner. As you can see, uh, the, the LCMS uh, can have a transversal resolution of one millimeter. It means that the distance here between two points investigated is one millimeter, and we have also uh, longitudinal resolution. So we have multiple of this line every millimeter. So the grid is one by one. And the vertical resolution uh, is 0 0.5 millimeter. So uh, this uh, precision allow you to recreate a through profile, transversal profile of the surface. And the precision you have in the Z uh, quote, you uh, allow you to identify the cracks. Of course, it is a, it's a big number of, uh, of data collected. So uh, we need a specific technology to perform uh, this type of survey. Uh, the LCMS can be installed in a mobile way, so we can uh, have a mobile installation. In this case, you see that uh, simple frames are used, but in a in in a, in an installation can that can be temporary, or we can have also permanent installation. So we have a fan that is specifically designed and uh, assembled to hold uh, the equipment in proper position. Uh, and in our case, if you see this picture, the MFE can have also a rare uh, office space where operator can have uh, uh, the possibility to use uh, multiple screen uh, to run the so collection software and uh, run maps uh, or additional software on the other screen. And the operator anyway, can have a, a, a computer in front, so you can run a single operator and driver, or you can have one operator and one driver. But uh, uh, of course, it's more usable uh, than the mobile solution. So which type of results can we have from the LCMS system? Here, there are two uh, examples. We can have a, what we call native image that is a black and white picture of the payment. It's a high D pictures, but of course it's just a simple black and white. Or you can have a, a range image that is an elaboration where the uh, deeper points uh, is uh, associated to black colors, and then there is a gray scale and the white color is the top, um, top points. So in this, in this case, usually the crack is highlighted because of, uh, are identified as deeper and uh, it's easier to find where crack is located. Uh, just to give you a, a, an idea of the precise of the LCMS, uh, here on top you have the profile collected from the 4,000 points uh, uh, provided from the camera. If you see these two peaks here, these two peaks here, this is the marking lane. So, of course, this is thermoplastic uh, marking lane, but the precise the camera can have is really high and allow you uh, allow to identify really small deviation from the uh, through plan. Uh, this is the soft one of the post processing software. Uh, again, here you can see the profile collected and you see this deviation here, this V shape in the profile, exactly the cracks. So the algorithm can process uh, the data and uh, uh, identify here that there is a deviation from the rectified um, surface and uh, is able to identify and place here the presence of the crack. And based on this information, also the width of the crack can be calculated. 
So, uh, in automatic way, there is a, a lane marking definition to exclude cracks outside the, uh, the road, and then all the cracks are uh, identified. Colored usual, colors usually are associated to the width of the crack. And uh, uh, so this is the automatic way the cracks are defined. Based on the uh, mathematical approach, and this mathematical approach, of course, provide you an objective identification of the cracks. In this way, the crack is always, if you repeat the test, the, the, the cracks is always identified and characterized in the same way because the uh, process is uh, completely objective and there is no subject, uh, subjective uh, evaluation of the operator. Uh, we have a, a software that is called Dynatest Explorer, where we import all the LCMS information. Uh, you can see here now, now we are going to rate a, a road. Uh, most of this information, of course, come from the uh, LCMS. Different color is associated to different distress types. Uh, alligators, uh, single cracks, uh, rattling, uh, rattling are associated during this uh, rating, so you can see that there is different type. Uh, the speed of the process, of course, depends on how many cracks are uh, identified on the uh, on the payment. So here we arrive at the end of this short section. You can see on, on the right side we have the uh, row camera surrounding area and all the list of the distress. So if you click on the distress, is identified on the uh, map. Uh, it's very important. Our software allows you to modify each single crack. You can delete if you want, and you can also draw manually uh, a single uh, um, a single distress. So, if during your review you identify that one crack has not been rated by the automatic processor, you can select which distress you want to draw, associate the severity. And, and then draw uh, the, uh, the cracks. This is very important uh, just to have a, um, an operation on the uh, automatic procedure. Uh, all the distresses are report can be exported uh, in a table format usually or a CSV file. Uh, we have a distress list, so each single distress you have a line where the distress is characterized for the uh, severity, width, length, and area, if there is, is, a, is an area uh, distress. And of course, there is the um, station, so what is the uh, starting and, and change, and GPS coordinates of each single distress. Of course, it is a list, very, very long, thousands of rows, Sometimes it's not really usable for the direct uh, evaluation. So we can export the distress summary. So if you have, a, if you create a, um, an interval, like in this case is a, a, is a 50 meter, uh, for each 50 meter, you can have the percentage of each single uh, distress type. So in this case, we have alligator crack, and we have uh, uh, the total amount uh, of the uh, of this distress for for this sample unit, and which is the percentage of the area covered by this distress, and which is the uh, percentage of uh, each severity level of the distress inside the sample unit. So you can have uh, uh, if a usable picture of the results. But of course, sometimes this stress is not so useful. So we need to talk about uh, PCI or some else. The software allows you also to have a, a graphic presentation of the trend of these, uh, these stresses. So the first uh, box uh, is uh, regarding the linear distresses. Sorry, uh, is re regarding the area distress, like alligator crack, broke crack. So you see that for each section of 50 meter, there is amount of square meter of each single distress. And uh, the second box is for linear distresses. Again, summarize every 50 meter. 
Of course, from the graph, you, key, you can immediately understand which could be the most critical section of your payment. And again, the distress can be exported in a graphic way. Uh, and graphic can be distress uh, vector format, so it can be exported as a, a AutoCAD file or DXF file. Uh, so you can exp you can import uh, in uh, uh, different software, or more usable, of course, uh, is the Google Earth export. So you can export uh, in KML format or shape file because information is associated anyway at the graphic uh, presentation of each single crack. So you can have the map of the cracks that is covered 100% of the payment uh, investigated. Uh, and again, most more important is the PCI calculation. We have automatic procedure in our software, so we can define where we want to calculate the PCI. Uh, we just define if it, which is the section where we want to calculate. And when PCI is calculated, we can export this information in, uh, in graphic presentation, so you can have a graph. Uh, where the data is summarized every sample unit. In this case, the sample unit is 50 meters, or also in a, a geographic uh, representation. In this case, is inside our uh, Banetes map model or exported directly in Google Earth. So in a fast process, when you finish the distress identification, you can export your um, information uh, immediately uh, in Google Earth to have a, a clear overview of the situation in a short way. Uh, of course, a more advanced evaluation is to stitch all the picture together. So here you can see that starting from Google Earth, you can see the picture uh, on a geographic sp spatial uh, representation. You can plot all the cracks uh, rated in Dynatest Explorer and in uh, with uh, GIS application, we can also calculate the PCI and quantify the distress summary for each sample unit. So this is a most advanced uh, usage of the uh, picture information and GPS data to combine some needs that sometimes is more useful in airport than not on the road. But of course, we can have also this GIS solution for the uh, PCI calculation. And here we have uh, again uh, one graphic presentation uh, just to provide you any, a different uh, idea of what happened in the road PCI, different from the airport PCI. Road PCI is usually is a line, one line for each single um, lane and the sample unit length is around 50 meters. Uh, in the airport, when you test 100% of the area, since the width of each infrastructure is much, much more than not the highway, you have a, a huge amount of area uh, that, uh, in this case, uh, each single area is a sample unit and PCI is calculated for each sem si si single uh, sample unit. Because of course, uh, for the company that manage the airport, uh, the maintenance has to be performed on the entire width. So the area dimension to be investigated and to be maintained is a, is a much, much more compared to the uh, highway. Sometimes the highway is very long, but the, uh, the the carriageway is with is sorry is uh, is narrow compared to the airport where the dimension is mostly in wide. And this is uh, uh, why we collect uh, PCI for multiple years. So if you see on the left, there is a graph where the PCI trend is reported by the payment age. So and if you report the information assuming that the, the, the points included in this graph is uh, homogeneous, so the sections are homogeneous, characterized by the same material and same traffic, 
you can of course get a decreasing a trend of the of the PCI uh, performance uh, by age. And this is very important because uh, with the same uh, concept, uh, you can decide uh, when it's better or most economical for you apply a certain type of maintenance. Because if the PCI is quite in good condition, the type of maintenance you can apply is a preservation or proactive uh, maintenance and it costs uh, a reasonable price. If you wait that PCI is going to reduce uh, the performance, of course, you need a resource phase or measure rehabilitation, or if you are in a faded area, of course, you need a full reconstruction. So based on this forecast, you can calculate which is your optimal time for rehabilitation or for maintenance. Uh, so we finished our short presentation. Of course, this uh, uh, webinar is not to go going detailed in the ISTM standard or in the uh, survey, but uh, it's just a summary presentation of the uh, surface payment evaluation. So we, uh, during our presentation, we uh, discuss about the distress definition, and this is very important, uh, what we are going to rate and why and how. Uh, of course, different type of distress survey Usually now we are going to compare manual uh, with the 3D camera uh, survey, which are the new technology uh, available, and of course how they can improve the quality of the results and the safety of the operation. How the data can be processed and which is the output we can get at the end of the elaboration. So we had a full overview of our um, work and uh, uh, you were able also to see which is, which is the flow chart. So thanks uh, for your time uh, and please provide a uh, question if you want. Uh, we uh, we answer to your uh, needs. I don't see any question in the list. I hope that everything has, be, uh, has been clear. Uh, thanks a lot for your uh, attending and see you to the next uh, webinar. Thanks a lot.